occasionally it's necessary to remove a few limbs from your trees. On this tree here, we have a few of them that we're going to address. Now first I want to say that if you have limbs that are higher than this, um, or larger than what we're dealing with here, I would strongly recommend you hire a tree professional to help you. But in this case, uh, we can reach these uh, fairly uh, safely and comfortably without any problem. Now the first one I want to address is this one right here. This was a limb that must have been damaged or broken earlier and they came in and cut it off uh, several inches away from the base of the trunk of the tree. And now you can see that it just has a lot of weak shoots that are shooting up from uh, at the end of the stump. And this is not very healthy and not very strong and so we need to remove this one. This limb here is a larger limb and we want to remove this one just to raise the height a little bit and make it a little bit, give us a little bit more room underneath the canopy of the tree. Now there's a few things you need to remember when you're cutting uh, a limb. Here at the base of the tree is the important part. Around, uh, at the base of the limb, there's what we call a branch collar, uh, which is actually this swollen part here, uh, right at the base of the limb. And some trees, it's very distinctive. You can see it really easily. In other trees, it's not as easy to find. There's also what we call um, a branch bark ridge, which is usually right here in the, in the V, where, right where it attaches to the, to the trunk of the tree. This area is where we want to protect. We don't want to cut into this zone because it's in this area here that hormones are produced by the tree to help seal off that wound. And that's, that's basically all they can do is, is uh, compartmentalize or seal off any wounds. Um, they can't actually replace the tissue that's been damaged. Or, um, so they just seal it off. And so we want to make sure that when we make this cut that it is outside, especially of this branch bark collar. Okay. Now. With this large limb, uh, it's also important to consider the weight of the, of the limb. And if you come in and just start cutting right here, like we're supposed to, uh, to make that first cut, then it's very possible that the weight of the limb, as you start getting about halfway through it, will drop. And what happens is then it, it breaks and it tears before you get all the way through, and it'll rip down the side of the trunk, and then you have a huge wound that will, will May, may take forever, or if at all, to, to seal off. So we want to avoid that. So we do use what we call the three-step method. First cut we want to make is actually right out here. We want to come out several inches, a foot or so, away from the base of the tree, and we want to go ahead and make an undercut. We want to cut far enough through it Then that if the tree, when it starts to, if it for some reason breaks because of the weight, when we start making a cut out here, then if, as it starts to rip back, it only go as far as this first cut instead of ripping all the way down the trunk. So the second cut then is we can come out here and go ahead and cut off um, a large part of the limb. Let's see, we'll go ahead and cut off this part right here. Notice how it's starting to rip here because of the weight of the limb. And if that were to get away from me, it'd only go back as far as this first cut here. Also remember that if you have a really large limb that's really heavy and much bigger than this, this saw really is designed for small limbs like this, um, it might be a better idea to go ahead and use a chainsaw, but the same methods apply even if you use a chainsaw. Toss that one down there. You go ahead and remove this one here too. Okay, now we have the weight of the limb uh, gone, so now we can come back to the base of the tree here, find that branch bark collar, and we want to make the cut just outside of that collar, and follow the, the, the collar all the way around. You don't want to cut, again, flush and into the collar. Collar sometimes extends a little bit out underneath the base of the branch, base of the limb, and then we'll go ahead and make that cut. Okay, we're almost through here. Again, you want to hang on to that stub to make sure it doesn't break off and tear down the side of the tree. And here we go. We have a nice cut. And you can see it's still a little bit out away from the base of the or away from the trunk of the tree, but we've protected that collar. And now, as the the tissue, the live tissue, continues to grow, it'll seal that off. And what we typically want to see is a nice round donut shape. 
And as that callus tissue uh, develops and, and closes off over the top of that limb, you'll see this nice little donut. And eventually as the tree matures, it'll be completely gone. Now on the other side of the tree, we have a dead limb, and that one shows a really good example of how that collar is trying to close off that limb, but it can't because there's a stub of a dead, of a dead branch there. So we want to go in and we'll go ahead and remove that dead branch right outside of that live tissue. We don't want to cut into that tissue though, and eventually that'll close off too.